we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video. Now in the last video, of course, we validated against this first text box, the name text box. In this video, we're going to validate against the address text box as well. So both of these text boxes now have to be filled out. So I've added another get element by ID right here, and I created a box to variable. And if we're going to validate against another text box, that means we need to add another condition. So we'll have multiple conditions. And here is the second condition. And in order to do that, we need to use a logical operator. And in this case, we're using the OR logical operator. So you can see I've got two conditions here. Now the rest of the code that we used from the last video will pretty much stay the same. We're not gonna alter it. So basically we want the same result. If the user doesn't at least put at least one character in these two text boxes, an alert will inform them to do so. And actually, I don't think we want this to say this field, this the field marked in red because we're not actually gonna use a focus method in this video. We'll do that in a few videos, but not in this one. So we'll just say the field cannot be blank. That's what we'll say. Now, when you start adding multiple conditions, things can get a little bit more confusing. And that's why it's helpful to create a diagram. And so that's what I've done down here. I've created a diagram that will walk us through each of the scenarios, and there can only be four outcomes. So this is the first condition, and that will be condition A, and the second condition will be condition B. And zero will be false, and one will be true. And you can see I've got them listed here. So in this scenario, the first condition would be true, and the second condition would be true, and that would make the overall expression true. That's because the OR operator only needs one of these conditions to be true. That's it. Only only one has to be true in order for the entire expression to be true. And you can see that here. The first one is true, the second is false, but the overall expression is still true. And so that's why it's helpful to write these conditions out to make sure the outcomes are what you expect. And of course, it's the same as the last video. We want this to be true if the user didn't fill out both of these forms. True in the sense, yes, they filled it out incorrectly and our code gets executed. If this overall expression is false, that means they filled it out correctly and we won't stop the form from being submitted. So let's walk through each one of these now and see how it works. Okay, so in this case, the first condition will be true and the second condition will be true. So that means both of these are null because that, again, we did this in the last video. We said it's true if this is set to null. So no characters will be put into each one of these text boxes. So we hit submit and it stopped us, good. Let's go to the second one now. The first one will be true, so this will be null, but the second one is false. That means they filled this out correctly. They put in some characters and it stopped us, right? The expression will be true because of the or. Remember, only one has to be true and it's true. Yes, they didn't fill this out completely because the first one was left null. So let's go down to the third outcome. So the first is false, so they put in some characters up here, but the second is true, so it remains null. So let's go ahead and hit submit and it stopped us. Okay, let's go down to the fourth outcome. Both are false, so this means both of these fields had characters in them. If we hit submit, ah, it let us go through because in both cases, they filled out the text box correctly. They put in characters. And if you take a look at this now, three of these outcomes will be true. If there's any trues in here, the OR operator will be true and it will stop the form from being submitted. So there's only one way they can fill this out correctly and that is to have characters in both text boxes and then both of these conditions will be false. So I think you can see why it's nice to fill out these diagrams to see how some of these logical operators work. And it's very useful, again, like I said, if you wanna start adding multiple conditions. Now you might ask, well, how could I add a, another condition for this phone text box? Well, we're not gonna do it in this video, but you would simply just make another variable, it'd be box three. You'd get the element ID for that, which in this case would be phone, right, phone. And then you would create the third condition here. And actually you would use the OR operator again. So you would put it here, and then you would put the third condition right here. It would be box three dot value. And that's how you can add another condition, but you have to use the OR operator again. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.